Hi, it's Tracy here from the Papercraft Studio. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be making this happy birthday card um, using mainly the layering circle dies to get this effect on here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. So you'll need a Whisper White, thick Whisper White card base. I've got mine opening like this. And you will also need, I've just covered up my notes here, um, a piece of smoky slate card stock which measures three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. And I've gone ahead here and embossed it with this, which is um, the scripty embossing fold. It's one of my favourites. You can see the detail on there. Um, I don't really know what it says, but um, it makes a really good background. So you can see on here, there's a really sweet script. So go ahead and layer those two together. Now, I can't remember whose card this was or whose kind of design with the circles that I originally saw. I think it was a, an overseas demonstrator. Um, and um, But I did change it slightly um, and it took me a while to figure out which circles to use um, so I have done a little chart um, it's a little visual that's got all the circles on there so I can share that with you if you click on the link below here um, I'll add it at some point on there onto my blog okay so as I said we are using Let's find the right page here. Mark them off. So these are the layering circles here. So I'm not using the scalloped ones, just the regular ones. And I've actually used um, also the stitched shape um, circles, the biggest one and the smallest one in here. But you could just use the other circles all the way through. But I just like the finish on there. And then I'm also using from from well written um, the birthday here and that um, also has a stamp set a stamp, ooh, a stamp set it coordinates with called well said and that's where I'm getting the happy from and that's a really great bundle to um, to have in your stash so if you've ordered um, September class by post from me you will have all of these things in your kit ready and to make it a bit easier I've numbered the back of some and put letters on the back of others i'm really sorry if you can hear a fly buzzing around i've done my best to get rid of it and it's really annoying me but um yeah so you'll see on the back of some of your semicircles i've put numbers on one set and then letters on the other set here just to make it a bit easier because you're going to get all of those in the kit together um and i just thought that was easier to um so you didn't have to figure out which one's layered with which Okay, so we're going to start um, with this section here. So we've got basic grey, and this is in the biggest stitched shape, and the second biggest um, um, sorry, uh, circle here. So we're going to just... The reason I'm starting with these is these all layer up really nicely. So on, on the ones you've got A to D, so we're just sticking the smoky slate one onto um, the basic grey and we're going to pop it up against this edge here and make sure that they line up across the bottom here so you start to build that kind of offset rainbow next we have Bermuda Bay it took me ages to figure out the colour combo that I wanted on here so I hope you like it in the end it works really well with rainbow colours with um all sorts really I've seen some really nice just neutral ones with browns and this one is um, Coastal Cabana so all of these you just keep popping lining up against this corner here and along the bottom edge until you have that um, little kind of offset rainbow shape and the reason we start with this one is with this one here because I've used the stitch shape instead of the, the slightly bigger one of these. And actually, even if you use the slightly bigger one of these, this would apply to, to get the right kind of gap there. You have to offset them a bit at the back. So they're not lining up straight here. They're, they're slightly out just so that you've got that 
similar kind of gap as, as the ones here. And you have to do that with the Costa Cabana layer and also the Bermuda Bay just to create that. Um, and the reason I've done it in that order is so that we can line them up against this one. Okay, so let's start with the um, Costa Cabana onto the pool party layer. So I'm just going to put glue not right to this edge because that's not going to stick down. Oh, yes, it is. Is it? This takes me ages to figure out which way I'm going. I was right, yes. So I'm just going to come in slightly the same kind of distance between these ones and stick that layer down. Because my I'm doing it on the camera, so I'm a little way away from where I can see. So as I said, on the back, you're going to have this slight overlap here. Then your Bermuda Bay again is going to go on um, and slightly overlap that way so that you start lining up these sections. So again, I'm just going to put glue more on this side. It doesn't matter if you go over that edge, it's just you might stick to your paper here. So similar distance, doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see I'm working on um, these gaps being roughly the same. And then it just starts to work out. So this one here, you can just stick on and you can see if you line them up here, then they start to work out. Um, you could line it up as you go if you wanted just to make sure, but um, as long as you have this kind of gapping between them, you shouldn't go far wrong. So on this one, I'm just going to pop this one down. In a second, I'll tell you which circles I've used, actually. Um, I'm going to pop this one on in a minute. So just to let you know, so this is the biggest stitched shape circle, these two. Uh, these two are then the, sorry, this one is then number two, the second largest circle. These two are the third largest. These two are the fifth. This one and this one are the seventh. And then I've also got um, the smallest stitch shape to um, to work on. So it was a bit complicated to work out. And like I said, I've done a little kind of visual, which I'll attach um, on, on, onto my blog post, just saying uh, which, which. And I'll show you, it was really easy to cut them in half, actually. And again, they're probably not exact, but if I just bring in my trimmer, um, let's see if I can get it in shot. So I just, this piece here, this is the cutting line. And then in between these two bits, I just kind of rested the circle where it sat. You know, I didn't want it rocking. Just like, just in the middle there. Um, and then just pulled the cutting blade down. They're not perfectly in half, but you will, each time you do this with a circle, then you get to make two cards. So that was just how I cut all of the um, circles in half. The only two you don't want to do that on are the smallest basic grey and this um, Whisper White stitched one. Okay, so they're ready to pop on here. Now with this one, I put the one with the four pieces on with the basic grey at the bottom at the top. <laughs> that sounds like a contradiction in itself, doesn't it? Right, okay. I flip that over. And so about here, so I've just lined it up pretty much with the edge of this script. Um, this is a smoky slate, I think I mentioned that. This one then, you're going to line up with that um, so that they're looking like they're little flowing curves. So again, glue on the back of here. actually quite late at night now. I did some videoing earlier and then the girls wanted to watch some bits on TV with me because it's Saturday night and um, I thought I'd escape a bit earlier <laughs> but I didn't and I like spending time with them obviously so um, yeah so it's a bit, little bit late that's why there's quite a few shadows. Uh, this one is going to sit on here on the end. Um, there's a bit of a, a drop down here obviously so I'm going to pop um, a dimensional there. You might just put it on here directly because I know I'm going to stick that down then. 
Um, yeah, so that, put a little bit of glue at the bottom. Um, and then the top bit's going to be supported by that dimensional. And just get it so that it kind of lines up with that little swirl again. Um, so it's following that shape. And then with the, um, I lost my glue lid. <laughs> I don't know why I feel I have to put it on every time, otherwise it dries out, but it, it'll be fine for a while. Um, I've used the Happy, as I said, um, from the, what are they called? Well Said Stamp Set. It's a really versatile one. Um, and it, like I said before, it coordinates with the well-written dies. This is the birthday die um, that we're using. So I just wanted the Happy on here and then the birthday layers up. So I'm going to stamp that in Smoky Slate. I've already, and I put it slightly higher um, up on here. So I'm just gonna see if I can stamp this without getting my head in. Um, originally I did it centrally, but then I realized that when I put the birthday on it, it kind of overlapped some, but you couldn't quite see it all. So, and then again, this one's going to layer on top of the basic gray one there. So you can pop a dimensional, do we need one? Maybe not actually because it's sitting on top of that one. So let's just put some glue um, more around the bottom. And because this glue is so strong, it will just hold that even if you haven't got it all over. And there we go. And obviously you could cut out different words depending on what you're doing here. I've gone ahead, like I said, and cut this out. This is in Bermuda Bay. I did play around for a while with different colour backgrounds and different colours here. And um, if you stick that along, pretty much along that line, it covers up the joins. So if you're confident to just pop some glue dots on, uh, sorry, not glue dots, but drops of glue onto the back of here. If not, squeeze a little bit in the corner of your scrap paper and then just pick up bits to dot on but if you squeeze it quite slowly let me just see which bits are actually going to be attached okay i'm just going to come in a little bit and put some little dots of glue around i'm hoping to get a little lion in the morning um, first week back to school for my girls this week and it's been tough, <laughs> tough getting out of bed really early every morning to, um, I mean, they're, they're older, they, they sort themselves out pretty much, but obviously, you know, I like to be around to, to help them with things. Um, so yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been quite tough the first week back. I'm a real night owl, so mornings to me are really tricky. Okay, there we go. So we're going to hide most of that line along there just gonna move that up a little bit and just hold it in place until it dries if you need to add a little bit more glue somewhere then absolutely fine and then i finished it off quite simply just with um these are let's see what these are called you get these little um kind of opaque um dots and also some uh silver dots as well um Let's just check what they're called. Sorry, I should have found that before. Um, mm, mm, mm. Frosted and clear epoxy droplets. And um, I've, I've sent out in my kit mainly the shiny ones. In fact, all the shiny ones. That's why I only have a couple left. But um, I also really like these ones. So they make great raindrops and things. So I'm going to put the smaller one here just at the dot of the eye and then i mean obviously if you had more you could move them around pop them wherever you want but i'm just going to pop another one up there um and there you have it so a card that looks really simple hopefully i've done the hard work for you <laughs> working out which circles to use and etc but you can make some really lovely cards with all different colors in there so thanks for joining me today and i'll speak to you soon take care bye <laughs>